or third graders. We're ready to move on with math. And we're almost done. We're almost done with our whole book, which is pretty cool. Today we're going to talk about what are called um, quadrilaterals. And quadrilaterals, this means four. This means lines. Quadrilaterals have four sides. A good way to remember this is qua, like in quarter, four quarters and a dollar. Qua, as in a quad that you ride around on, has four wheels. Um, qua means four, lateral means line. So, a four-sided polygon. There are a whole bunch of quadrilaterals. A whole bunch of shapes, or polygons rather, that are classified as quadrilaterals because there's a lot of different ways to make a four-sided polygon, okay? And they're classified using different things. For instance, you can look at the length of their sides, right? And that can change what kind of quadrilateral, quadrilateral it is. You can also look at their angles, okay? And whether they're right angles or not right angles. And you can also look for what are called parallel lines. Okay, and we are going to talk about parallel lines for a minute before we get started. One way to remember parallel lines is to look right here in this word. These two lines right here are parallel. Okay, so let's just focus for now on what the word parallel means. Okay, I'm kind of looking at this. Parallel is two lines that are going in the same direction. They do not have to be the same length, but they're going in the same direction, and if they were to continue forever in either direction, they would never cross. They would just always be the same distance apart. Okay, they're not leaning toward each other. Like, this is not parallel. This is not parallel. Because if these lines continued, eventually they would intersect or go further apart, okay? Those are not parallel. So. If I have a four-sided shape, like, let's say this, let me make that a little better, All right? These two lines are not parallel, but these two lines, this one and this one, those are parallel. If they continue down, they're never going to cross, right? In something like a square, you have two sets of parallel lines. Opposite lines, opposite sides are parallel. In a rectangle, which is also a quadrilateral, you also have two sets of parallel lines. In this shape, you don't, okay? And this is called a trapezoid, by the way. So also, you might have a shape um, like, I'm trying to think of another one here like the, that looks more like this, okay? These two sides are parallel, and so are these. That has two sets of parallel lines, okay? So, you can look, when you're trying to figure out what kind of quadrilateral you have, you can look at the length of the sides, you can look at the angles and whether they're right angles. Remember the right angle looks like this, right? Whether they have right angles and or whether they have parallel sides. So, I'm gonna give you an example of a rectangle. And this might be good for you to take some notes as I go, like draw the shape and put the name so that you can see why it's called what it is, okay? So I'm gonna give you, we're gonna label, make kind of a chart of some quadrilaterals. So doing along with me, doing a drawing and a description is gonna help you later with your work. Okay. So the first quadrilateral that a lot of people are familiar with, and I'm going to do my best drawing I can, is called a square. Right? Now what do we notice about a square for its attributes, which is meaning its features, its characteristics? What you notice is the sides are the same, same size, same sides, same length. They're all the same length if it's a square. The corners are all right angles. Okay. And the 
opposite sides are parallel. I'm going to put this as my opposite sides parallel. I'm going to kind of abbreviate things so we have enough space here. Okay, opposite sides parallel. That, that is a good description for the attributes of a square. It has to have same sides, same, all the sides are the same, all the right, it's all right angles, and the opposite sides are parallel. Okay, another type of quadrilateral that you should be very familiar with. Remember, if it's quadrilateral, it has to have four sides, four lines, whoops, four sides. Ah. Okay, now, a rectangle also has four right angles and it has opposite sides are parallel. The difference between a rectangle and a square is that the sides aren't all the same size. The opposite sides are the same size. So this being a rectangle, you have um, the opposite sides are the same and parallel. Okay, and it's all right angles. Now the tricky part with this is that if you look at the, a square, is a square, are the opposite sides the same size? Yes. Are the opposite sides parallel? Yes. Are they all right angles? Yes. So a square is not only a square, but it's also a rectangle. It just happens to be a perfect rectangle. But a rectangle, to be a rectangle, all you need are these things to be true. You don't have to have all your sides the same size. Okay? Another one is this. Okay? Now, this is called a trapezoid. Okay? A trapezoid, I always try to think of a trapezoid, I put a little mouse in here, as if he's trapped. Okay? And that kind of helps me remember that's a trapezoid, it looks kind of like a trap, right? And it could be facing a different direction, right? The only rules for a trapezoid are that it has one set of parallel lines, And if you're doing this on paper, you might want to pause to get the words down. I know I'm going fast. One set of parallel lines, and I believe, I want to get your definition right. Um, it doesn't have any right angles. Okay? So, um, the, the reason, it, in this case, it doesn't have any right angles. It actually could have one right angle, it could be shaped kind of like this. It could have one right angle, right? But it only has one set. This is kind of its rule. One set of parallel lines. That makes it a trapezoid. All right, I'm gonna fit one more here. Let's see if we can do a, let's do this one. A rhombus, okay? And a rhombus, if I draw one here, In this case, the difference between this shape and this shape, a rhombus and a square, is that this doesn't have any right angle. Hey there, I added a couple more things here to the rhombus so that you would know here. It has opposite sides are parallel, right? It has no right angles. And the um, sides are the same size. Oops, why do I do that? Sides. Sides are the same. Okay. The opposite angles, because the sides are the same, the opposite angles are going to be the same too. So we could put that there. We could put opposite angles. Same. Okay. This one is acute and this one is acute. This is obtuse and this is obtuse. Okay. Now the last one is 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 actually covers more than just this, but if I do what looks like a rhombus, except it's long, 
I may have what's called a parallelogram. Okay, a parallelogram has um, the opposite sides are the same, which means this side is the same length as this side, and this side is the same length as this side. Opposite sides are parallel. And I think that's all we have to have for a parallelogram. Oh, opposite angles are the same. Okay. So, if opposite sides are the same length, you're going to end up with, and they're both parallel, you're going to end up with the angles the same. Okay? The trick of this is, with quadrilaterals, is sometimes... A quadrilateral, a quadrilateral can have more than one name because it, it matches the rules for more than one of these. So for instance, in a square, the opposite sides are the same, the opposite sides are parallel, and the opposite angles are the same. This is actually a parallelogram, but it's also a square. Okay? This too follows the rules for a parallelogram because both opposite sides are parallel, but it's also a rectangle. This one's not a parallelogram, because its opposite sides are not parallel. Only one set is. A rhombus is like a perfect parallelogram. It not only follows all these rules, but in a rhombus, all the sides are the same size, too. Okay? These are the main ones that um, we're going to work with. And what I want you to realize is that the word diamond is not a name of a polygon. It's rhombus. If you were to turn this rhombus this way, you would see that it's, it looks like what you may have referred to as a diamond in the past, but that's not the name of it, a polygon. Okay. So this chart, you might want to freeze on this page or write this down for yourself on your own chart when you work in your book because this will help you. And in your book, on page 849, whoops, sorry, not 849, um, on page 853, you're going to be working with looking at the attributes of shapes and noticing, is there one pair of parallel lines? Are they both parallel lines? Um, looking at the angles. You're going you're gonna to count how many angles are right angles. So look at the directions carefully. And then name that polygon. So when you go to name that polygon, this, that's when you might need to look at this chart. Okay. Um, you also, if you're not sure, you can look at the back in your glossary. If you're like, I think that's a rhombus, look in the back in your glossary, and it will give you the same definition for, for your different polygons. Okay. Good luck. See you later. Hey third graders, just realized I had spelled trapezoid wrong on the, originally on my chart, and it's an E in trapezoid, not an A, so make sure when you're writing that word you spell it right. See you later.